back to the weather classroom. They say variety is the spice of life. And if weather's your thing, then you're definitely living on the right planet. The Earth is constantly moving and shifting, making mountains here and deserts there. In the United States alone, there's just about every kind of landscape you can imagine, which means we get a taste of just about every type of climate right here in our own backyard. So let's get back out there with the gang and dig a little deeper into the secrets of the Earth to find out how the land affects the weather. crazy weather. Pound for pound, we have the wildest weather in the world. Pick any year and you'll see droughts, hurricanes, deadly cold, frying heat, and undoubtedly the worst and the greatest number of tornadoes that happen on the planet. So how do we get so lucky? Well, there are lots of different ways that land affects the weather. Now, oceans absorb and release heat slowly. When you get onto dry land or a more arid climate, like here in Zion Canyon in Utah, the rules change. Land heats up quick and cools down fast. That means the farther away you go from water, the bigger the difference you'll see between day and night and summer and winter temperatures. But that still doesn't tell us why the U.S. has such wild weather. Well, it works like this. It's the story of two streams. You hear weather people talk about them all the time. The jet stream is a narrow river of strong wind, way above the ground, that generally blows from the west and can get up to hundreds of miles wide. The jet stream can also be thought of as the storm track. The most happening weather can usually be found near the jet stream. The other stream, the Gulf Stream, is in the ocean, the Atlantic Ocean to be exact. It's like a warmer river flowing through the middle of the cooler ocean water. This current is huge, wider than the Mississippi and longer than the Amazon. The Gulf Stream brings warm water north and runs it along our eastern coast. That helps stir up all of our huge winter storms. Now, as if that weren't enough, cold ocean currents around the west coast make up for foggy conditions. Plus, the warm water to our south and east often makes us ripe for hurricanes from the Atlantic Ocean, Caribbean Sea, and the Gulf of Mexico. But wait, don't order yet. The center of our country flattens out to the Great Plains, which is where cold, dry air from the north, warm, humid air from the south, and warm, dry air from the southwest creates the world's worst thunderstorms and tornadoes. Now that's a recipe for wild weather. So it's because of the way our land is laid out that we get such amazing weather. But the weather is affected by the land in subtle ways, too. lift. That's the technical name for the flow of air that happens over a mountain range like the Sierra Nevada here in California. The wind usually blows from the west to the east, and when it hits the mountains, it's forced to rise and condense. A cloud forms then, and it starts to rain or snow on the west side of the mountains. But this effect doesn't just make it rain on one side. It can make it dry on the other. Here in the Sierra, for instance, more than 100 inches of precipitation a year falls on the west or windward side. On the east or leeward side, though, the air sinks back down, gets warmer, drier, and much less rainfall. This is called the rain shadow effect. Rain shadow has actually helped make a lot of the world's deserts. Now, some of the physical features of our planet can be more dramatic than others and can have amazing effects on the weather. Brandon's going to fill us in on a very hot example. Okay, check this out. The outer layer of the Earth is like a big crust that floats over a core of fiery hot rocks. Now this crust is divided into pieces called plates, and they're slowly moving around. It's called continental drift. 
and where those plates meet, some very interesting things start to happen. Volcano forms when a crack in the Earth's crust allows magma, or liquid rock, to ooze up. At first you see ash and smoke as a warning sign, then the lava starts to spew. Volcanoes create new crust on the planet. They can form islands and even enlarge land masses. So what does it have to do with weather, you might ask? Well, one large volcanic eruption can actually make the weather colder across the entire world. Don Swanson of the U.S. Geological Survey lives with these volcanoes and knows all about what happens when the Earth blows its top. The Volcano Observatory here, which is run by the U.S. Geological Survey, is, is devoted to trying to better understand how, how volcanoes erupt and try to predict uh, when they're going to erupt and then to devise ways to mitigate the effects of these eruptions uh, on the populace. And so we, we have a here at this, at this observatory and others around the world have a very intensive uh, research program underway to try, to try to understand how volcanoes work. What happens when a volcano erupts depends on the kind of volcano that it is. The Hawaiian volcanoes usually erupt rather quietly and that means that, that lava comes out of the ground and forms lava flows. There may be some fountains associated with it like turning a garden hose up on end but it's all pretty, pretty tame stuff. Uh, explosive volcanoes, and Hawaiian volcanoes can be explosive uh, every once in a while, but some volcanoes are normally explosive, are a lot more powerful, and they can, the gases that can escape from the magma can throw rocks uh, many, many miles into the air. And those, those are the powerful explosions and eruptions that you hear about. The islands themselves are just the tips of, of much larger volcanoes, most, most of which are uh, below sea level. Uh, the best example of that is Mauna Loa volcano, which is just adjacent to Kilauea, where we are now. If you go all the way from the bottom of Mauna Loa, where it's depressed the seafloor, uh, to its, its very top today, the mountain is 56,000 feet high. It's, it's not only the largest volcano on Earth, but it must be the largest uh, mountain of any kind on Earth. Well, you'll probably never see the birth of a volcano uh, from the, its very start. Although, as we speak, there is a volcano just off the south coast of, Kil of uh, Kilauea that um, hasn't yet formed an island, but is, but is active. It still has about 3,000 feet to go to get up to the uh, sea level, but eventually it will become an island that will maybe, maybe be added on to the island we're on now. The Weather Classroom will be right back.